Welcome back. This should be video number three in our Build a Shed in Revit series. So when we left, uh, we were last together, uh, we had created our 12 by 16 rectangle for our walls. And we talked about flipping the walls inside out. We had also talked about in our floor plan view, being able to see the high detail in our walls. All right. We're now ready to think about moving on as we have already taken care of our 12 by 16 footprint. We have a foot wall height. We did not really talk about the exterior wall stuff yet. We should probably go back and take a look at that. So let's do that now. I'm going to select one of the walls that we've used. And when I select something, I'm going to be shown that object's properties in the properties toolbar or window. And if I click on this button here where it says edit type, this is where I start to understand the power of Revit, where I've got a lot of control. So when I click on edit type, it brings up a secondary window. Uh, and I always like to come down here to left, the bottom left hand corner and turn on or expand the preview. And so uh, what we're starting to look at here is uh, what we're seeing on our floor plan. Okay, we have a floor plan view. We also have a section view. Uh, I'm going to stick with the floor plan view because it's kind of close up and I can see that we've got this white layer here, a yellow layer, a gray layer, and then there looks like there's a, a line in between and then another gray layer. So what exactly is going on here? Well, what we want to do is I'm going to come over here where it says structure and I want to look at this edit button. I'm going to left click on the edit and now it's going to take me into specifics about the materials. And I'm going to make this window a little bit larger so we can see a little bit more information. So up at the top here, it's telling us we have the exterior side of the wall, which would be where this white is. And we have the interior side, which is down here in our preview area. Uh, it's telling me we have an exterior finish, and we'll talk a little bit more about kind of the options here. Um, you can see that there are structures, there's finishes, there's thermals layers. Um, Revit can be kind of picky about where things go. Um, for the most part, uh, I would suggest sticking with the existing walls and modifying as necessary. Um, but obviously, if you have some questions in class, we can certainly uh, try to figure some of those things out. But you can see there are some of these things that are membranes and substrates and structure. Um, and these all have thicknesses, which we can see here. The exterior siding or clapboard is three quarters of an inch thick. If for some reason I wanted this to be three inches thick, that's right because I left the zero there. Let's take that zero out. I wanted that siding to be three inches thick. You'll see over here in my preview, now that is three inches thick in comparison to the rest of the material there. I'm going to put that back to three quarters of an inch for now. All right. We also have the materials. And again, if we click on those materials, more specifically that little gray box, let's close that back up, the little gray three data box, I left click on that, it should open up my materials browser. And again, this is all default stuff. There are a number of different materials that are preloaded into this software. You can make more, you can load more. Um, but for our purposes, we're just going to kind of leave things where they are right now. We can see that there is a membrane layer uh, that is uh, uh, probably like paper thin, so it has very little thickness. Uh, I don't believe Revit will let you change the membrane layer thickness. We have a sheathing, so a wood sheathing. It's a half inch thick. Let's go take a look at something real quick. We're on, we are looking at our exterior wall. Uh, we have clapboard siding, which we had on the outside. Uh, there's a moisture barrier labeled here, which might be like uh, our air barrier, so membrane here. And maybe it shouldn't say air barrier. Maybe it should be a membrane layer, but we're going to leave that one. Uh, where it is for now. We, oh, my bad. Let me open that back up. We are seeing plywood sheathing, but it does not tell us how thick this plywood sheathing needs to be. 
Um, so we're going to leave it as a default in the Revit software. We can certainly change it. We see we have two by six studs being shown. Okay, um, so that's going to have some impact on uh, the structural strength of our structure, how much insulation we can put in there, uh, noise uh, barrier properties. Um, it's going to have a, a big impact. Uh, also cost. We can see that they're saying we're using bat installation, or sorry, bat insulation, which is this kind of squiggly, curly Q looking line. So we've got insulation in the wall, and then we're being shown gypsum wallboard, half inch thick on the inside. So let's go back to uh, our Revit window. And I have a half inch gypsum wallboard finish. It is showing us that we have a vapor moisture barrier again on the inside. It's a little bit different than the example, but we're going to leave that there. Uh, and we see we have a stud layer. And in this case, it's five and a half inches thick. So think back to what we've talked about in class. Uh, is a two by four or a two by six actually the size that they say it is? Um, if you're not sure, remember I had shared or shown you where to go and look online where you can find the actual sizes of dimensional lumber. So again, we can be as accurate as we want to be with information here. And if there's a product that um, we want to use and all we have to do is plug in a material and a thickness and we can add it to a wall that we might be designing depending upon its application. So. This is all, again, be, have been set up for you. We can change any of this at any point in time. You can see we've even got information up here about BTUs and thermal masses. We're not worried about all of this stuff right now. Okay, so uh, can go down the rabbit hole very quickly. But I'm going to just cancel out of here uh, to show you again what's inside of that wall. This is pretty darn close to what we want to use for our shed. So that means we're ready to move on to the next part of our shed. And since we have the wall in, I think it makes sense to go and put a floor in next. So let's put a floor in. So here we can see we're uh, being asked to use two by eight floor joists. And we look to have a plywood sheathing for the floor. And it doesn't look like it has anything else on it. Okay, so there's no tile, there's no carpet. It's just a, a bare plywood sheathed floor uh, and two by eight floor joists. So that's our next order of business. Okay, so let's go up again to the architecture menu. And in this case, we're gonna go and grab a floor. So when I select floor, again, the toolbars are gonna change a little bit uh, and again, Let's go back through our checklist. Let's look at the properties of the floor that we want to create. Uh, in this case, we don't want a slab. We don't, well, let's see, we don't want ceramic tile. We don't want wood. We don't want carpet. And I don't see one of those that is set up to be a wood joist for an eight inch. So uh, I guess let's go with a wood joist 10 inch with a wood finish. So I'm going to select that. And before I do anything else this time, I'm going to look and edit the type of the floor. So let's go back to what we had going on when we were looking at the wall. And so I see we have a 2 by 10 floor joist, uh, which we don't want. And we've got wood sheathing, uh, and it looks like it's 3 quarters of an inch, and there's a wood floor. Now, what I'm going to suggest is you cancel out of this window and we don't want to modify oh, i'm sorry we do want to modify this but we don't want to get rid of this particular uh floor type what we want to do is we want to make our own but maybe we want to use this as a starting point so over here on the right we have the duplicate menu or bar toolbar uh, a button whatever you want to call it so i'm going to hit duplicate and when i do that it gives me the option to change the name so I'm going to change it from a wood floor, wood joist 10 to wood joist 8. And I'm going to do a, a wood subfloor. Maybe I make it plywood subfloor. Let's do that because, you know, that's more specific and that maybe is helpful. So I'll do plywood subfloor. 
And so when I say OK, you see I still have the same the same settings that I had did with the 10 inch joist, but now we're looking at an eight inch joist. So we have to modify the structure. If we want things to be correct, we need to understand the thicknesses. So let's start with the layer four, uh, which is our structure wood joist. And I know I don't want it to be nine and a quarter. If memory serves me correctly, a two by eight is actually seven and a quarter. So let's change the thickness of the wood floor to seven and a quarter. And, then, and in theory, this picture on the left-hand side has been updated. We're going to leave the three-quarter inch plywood sheeting in there, uh, but we don't want the wood flooring. So you'll notice I'm selecting these rows with an arrow in this particular layer column. So I'm going to select row one, and I want to delete it. I don't want it there. You obviously see there's an insert button, so I could add things, but I'm going to delete this. And so now our floor has been updated to reflect what we're looking to put in for our design. So I'm going to say OK uh, and say OK again. And, and now I have the floor type selected. Again, the next thing to pay attention to in our properties is the level constraint. And I do still want this to be on the first floor level. And now we go up to our modify toolbar. And you haven't seen this too much yet. I know that I am in what they call sketch mode or create mode. Uh, and because I see a red X for cancel and a green check mark for accept. I also have a couple other options here that we're not going to talk about. And we have different ways to draw floors. You know, do I want straight lines? Do I want a rectangle? We also have one here called pick walls. I generally like to start with using the rectangle. Okay, so we have control over things, not looking for the software to decide for us. So I'm going to grab this rectangle sketch and I'm just going to go to the outside corner of one of my uh, walls. And you can see I'm drawing out uh, a purple or a magenta sketch line. And I want to attach it to the other outside edge of my shed. Okay, and I'm going to hit escape there to cancel out of the sketch and hit escape again. And I should no longer be trying to draw a rectangle. What I want to do now is focus in here on our uh, corner. And so this is the inside here on the right and the outside on the left. And if we look at our example drawing, we zoom in nice and close. It's a little pixelated, but you can see right here that the stud wall stops at the edge of the floor, or the floor stops at the outside edge of our stud wall. And we have, in this case, what looks to be our exterior sheathing uh, and our um, siding material sticks out past the floor. So we need to duplicate that. Right now, we don't have that going on. And the easiest way is to simply just left click and drag. And you'll see it. my cursor is kind of jumping around. What I'm looking to do is get this to uh, line up perfectly with this line right here. And this can be a little bit of a struggle. Sometimes I find zooming in more or less uh, can make it easier. I'm trying to draw from the left to the right, but it should. Make me look bad. <laughs> Come on now. Well, let's ignore that one. I'm going to go down here. Let's try this bottom one. That's what it should do for me is almost lock in the place. So let's come back over here and try this again. I could also try to use the arrow buttons on my keyboard. And you can see it's moving over by certain increments. And that looks like it's locked on to that corner. So I'm going to zoom out using the pan, move up to an opposite corner because we have a rectangle here. And again, I'm going to try and get this to lock into place. So we're on the outside edge of our stud wall. Okay, so something like that. And when I believe I've done a good job, 
of aligning those magenta lines, I'm going to tell the software that I'm finished editing. Now, don't worry if you have trouble with this. We can always come back and edit this floor at a later date. So <clears throat> I'm going to say I'm done. And this is a good sign. I now see that my floor is highlighted. So let's go take a look at the 3D view. And you can see here my floor is still blue and the floor appears to be in the correct location. And we can see that it is not to the outside edge of our wall. So that was successful. Okay, so I just uh, hit escape or left click there and the floor is no longer selected. So if at a later date you decided we wanted to adjust this, I can certainly select that floor and I can either edit its boundary and you can see it brings up this magenta lines and, and by the way if I was going to modify this I would definitely want to do it in the floor plan view uh, not necessarily in 3D um, or while I have it selected I can certainly change its style maybe we decided we want a 10 inch floor ooh, with a wood pattern notice it's got a wood pattern on it uh, but I want to leave it at the 8-inch joist with subfloor. And since I put a floor in, I'm going to hit Control-S and save.